Hey there, Louis Akabalos here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add metadata to files that are stored in Microsoft Teams. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. Now, let's go ahead and let's get started. All right, now the first thing that you need to do is navigate to the channel of the team with the files that you want to add metadata to. Now you can see here that I am currently in the general channel of my Project X team and I'm in the Files tab. Now the next thing that you want to do is you want to scroll up to the command bar and you want to click on Edit in Grid View. Now this might look familiar if you've ever used SharePoint. Grid View allows you to add, edit, delete, metadata associated with files. It almost gives you an Excel-like table feel. Now you can see here that I can kind of just move around into the different cells. So if I wanted to change the name of files, I can easily just do that here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click on this Add Column dropdown. And this button is going to let you create different column types that you can then use to record metadata or other attributes of your specific files. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk through creating a bunch of different columns so you can get an idea of how you can use metadata to help you add additional information about files that are stored in Teams. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to scroll down and we're going to add a choice type column. So I'm gonna go ahead and click choice. And that's going to bring up this create a column menu. Again, if you've ever worked with SharePoint lists, this menu is going to be familiar to you. And just a note, if you are interested in learning how to create a custom list in SharePoint Online, that is going to walk you through sort of the same steps just in SharePoint. I've included the link to my tutorial showing you how to do that in the description below. And you can just click that card in the upper right-hand corner of the screen to watch that video. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a column called status, and that is going to be used to track the status of these files. So I've given my column a name. You can put in a description here if you would like. This description is just stored in the background so that other users can understand what this column is intended for. And then because we've selected choice type column, we can then insert values that are gonna be displayed in a dropdown field that users can select from. So in terms of my states or my statuses, I'm going to call them backlog. My next option is going to be in progress. And my last option here is going to be complete. And if I wanted to change the colors of these options, I could just click on the little color palette icon and I could select one of these color options. Now, if you wanted to delete an option, you could just click on the X to the right of the choice. If you want to rearrange these, you can just place your cursor over the move button and drag and drop them. And that's just going to change the order in which they appear in your dropdown. And if you want to add an additional value, you just click the add choice button. Now I'm just going to scroll down and I'm going to go ahead and click save. And so you can see here that my status column has been added. Now, when I go ahead and click into this field, you can see here my dropdown list, and I can now go ahead and select from one of these values. So I'll just go ahead and click in progress. And what's really cool about editing in grid view in Teams is again, you can use this almost like Excel. So you also have this fill handle. So I can just place my cursor on the lower right-hand corner of the cell, and I can just click and it's going to allow me to automatically populate values all the way down. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and change a few of these for demonstration purposes. And you can see here that I've now created a metadata column that is a choice type and I've put in specific status values that meet my information requirements. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and click on the add column dropdown again. And this time what I'm going to do is add a person type column. So I'm gonna select person or group and I'm gonna call this document owner. So we're gonna use this column to record who the owner of this document is. Now, I'm gonna come down just below the type field and an important note when you're working with person or group type columns, 
you want to make sure that you either check or uncheck allow selection of groups. If you check this, that means that you'll be able to pipe in distribution lists or active directory groups that exist in your Microsoft environment. I typically recommend that you uncheck this unless again, you have a requirement to be able to assign groups as values against your documents. Now I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna click on the more options button here. And with this column type, again, you also have the option of allowing multiple selections. You can make columns required. So if you did wanna do that, you're always gonna see this require that this column contains information. If you toggle this on, it's gonna make this field mandatory. So I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now when I click into the document owner field, what this is going to allow me to do is search for users that exist in my Microsoft environment. So I can just type in letters and I'm gonna see some suggestions here. So I can go ahead and populate in the document owners for each of these files. And there we go. We've added a choice type column and we've also added a person type column. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna show you is how to add one additional column. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and click add column here. And this time, what we're going to do is we are going to add a date and time column. So I'm just gonna come down and select date and time. And we're gonna go ahead and call this approval date. And we're gonna use this column to record the date in which these files were approved. Now, when you're working with date and time columns, you always have the option of including the actual time in the field itself so that that is visible to users. I'm just gonna leave this off. You can also choose to display the full string in terms of the day and month. If you check friendly format, I'm just gonna leave this off and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And now when I click into my approval date column, what this is going to do is this is now going to allow me to just quickly put in a date through a calendar picker. So I can just go ahead and select a value here and you can see that it is automatically going to record that information. Now, when you're ready to save this data, again, we're working in what's called this grid view here, which is almost like that Excel tabular view. You wanna go ahead and click exit grid view. And in this case, you can see here that I'm getting prompted that there's some data that I didn't populate that is required. So I'm gonna, X out of this menu here and I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna quickly populate all of these fields. And I'm just gonna scroll over and make sure that I've populated everything, everything looks good. So I'm gonna click exit grid view and now my data has been saved. So this is how you can create metadata directly in Microsoft Teams. Again, if you've used metadata in SharePoint before or you've ever worked with a SharePoint list, it functions exactly the same but it's now visible directly in Microsoft Teams. And what's really cool about this is we can use this to quickly filter files, we can create views, et cetera. Now, just very quickly, if you did want to filter by some of your metadata, you can just place your cursor over the specific column that you wanna filter by. So in this case, if I click on status and I click filter by, this is going to allow me to quickly filter by one of the status values. So if I select in progress, and click apply, it's going to reduce the list of files that are displayed to show me only those where the state is in progress. Now, if I click on the drop down to the right of approval date, and again, I click filter by here, this is going to allow me to filter by specific date values, etc. Now, very quickly, in addition to filtering, other things that you can do when you've added metadata to files in Teams is you can also group your files by specific columns. So for example, if I click on the status dropdown and I click group by status, this is going to quickly display my files grouped by the respective status values. And I can easily just click these dropdowns to collapse and expand the full list by their respective statuses. So this is how you can add metadata to files that are stored in Teams and how you can actually add that metadata, manipulate it, use it to filter your files, use it to group your files directly from within the Microsoft Teams application. This is one of my favorite tips and tricks with Microsoft Teams because it allows me to quickly query 
when I've got tons of files and I want to quickly look for specific files or create different views on my files. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how you can create metadata for files that are stored in Microsoft Teams. I also showed you how you could filter by that metadata and group by that metadata. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabales. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.